Hello all, welcome to my isolation station where I've spent well, the first nine weeks of what feels like an eternity but it's nine weeks on Friday of football suspension. Um, my hair's looking a little bit long, a little bit grey around the sides, that might have to be trimmed off. Uh, I don't think, uh, well I've worn a shirt once, that was for the video call with uh, Norwich's executive committee a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, no, I'm sort of getting into the... Uh, the, the hang of uh, wearing more casual clothes, but um, I'll, I'll show you the very exciting isolation station that I've been staring at for uh, the last few weeks shortly. But just want to have a catch up with you guys, really, about Stuart Webber, who uh, was on Sky Sports News this morning and uh, gave a very polished performance as ever. Some pretty punchy language. Um, was speaking to uh, Jeff Shreves, Gary Neville, Graeme Sunez on Sky this morning. And they covered a, a lot of topics. Um, Stuart really sort of breaking his silence to a certain extent on uh, the issues which have bubbled away since we interviewed um, Stuart, Zoe, Ward and Ben Kensel, which was, uh, I think that was three weeks ago now. The days all sort of merge into one a bit at the moment, don't they? So we'll reflect on that in just a minute. But here, here is the exciting, uh, as I say, isolation station which I've been uh, working from last few weeks. That is a uh, front page from when I left my job at the Scunthorpe Telegraph in 2010. Got a few, uh, a few books, a few programmes. The sticker book, of course, is up there, which you may know took up uh, quite a lot of my time last year, but went reasonably well, so it was worth it in the end. Um, so, yeah, Stuart, the, the main issue, which um, went down well with Leeds, he, he publicly came out as a Leeds fan, which is um, something that we've sort of known about Stuart informally for a while, but um, he actually um, ended up sort of telling Gary Neville explicitly during his appearance on Sky Sports News because um, the comments that he made about relegation, Gary Neville came back to him and sort of said, well, you're going to be popular in Leeds. And Stuart said, uh, I was a season ticket holder for 10 years at Leeds, grew up as a Leeds fan. Now, of course, Stuart Webber is a Norwich fan, as things stand out all that you know goes without saying is that the second he arrived at the club in 2017 Norwich were far more important to him uh, than, than Leeds United or any other club so um, you know ev everybody grows up with a, a club that they support don't they um, but the gist of what he was saying was that if Norwich are able to complete the season they finish in the bottom three and are relegated fair enough uh, as long as they found a way for the season to be resumed in the safest possible manner and a, the fairest possible manner. Um, and if Norwich are in the bottom three still, they go down, they can't have too many complaints because they, uh, as they have said from the start, uh, have gone along with the Premier League thinking and that the season needs to conclude. Um, from everything that we've heard in recent weeks, the club planning for this uh, loss of income between 18 million and 35 million pounds. Uh, so that spreads throughout football, doesn't it? The huge financial impact that is going to be had throughout the game means that there, that seems to be the the overriding driving factor behind why football clubs are so desperate to get back playing. But he took that further and said that he thought if the championship clubs were to get promoted, which at the moment is Leeds on top and West Brom in second, they're clear, uh, West Brom six points clear of Fulham, Leeds a point further ahead, that he felt those championship clubs need to conclude their season as well if they were to get promoted and take those uh, places in, in the league. Um, he took that in the Premier League. He took that on further by saying that, uh, using the analogy of Norwich being in the FA Cup quarterfinals, so as they stand, they've got as much of a right to claim themselves as FA Cup winners as anyone else as the other seven teams, which of course... Um, he was maybe being a little bit flippant, but he was you know, emphasising his, his point there that Norwich haven't won the FA Cup at this stage and Leeds haven't won the Championship title at this stage. The same as Norwich haven't been relegated from the Premier, Premier League. Daniel Farker has spoken about his little miracle. He did. He spoke to Sky last week and, and re-emphasised that. They still feel that they are in with a shout of securing survival. They're six points from 16th as Stuart actually made the point in, in his interview. Uh, they've got nine games still to play, five of them are at home, and as we know, they're all against teams in the lower reaches. So you've got, uh, so that's Brighton, West Ham, Burnley, uh, da -da -da -da, and the other two escaped me off the top of my head. Uh, Southampton, Everton, they're the other two on there. So it's all 
from 10th downwards. So that was the big line that came out. Um, Leeds fans got themselves in quite a tears over that on uh, Twitter. And uh, as, as always, the, then there's all the infighting started. But it, it's not been too bad. Uh, obviously, they're not going to um, take well to anyone suggesting that their promotion uh, hopes could be in doubt. To be fair to Stuart, as he went on and talked about his sort of fondness for the club, he did also say that any true football fan wants to see Leeds back in the Premier League because they're a massive club. Um, and I guess what he was saying is that if they can conclude their season and go up as champions, which is you know how they'd want it, that's how Liverpool want to be able to do to, to be able to seal the Premier League title as well, don't they? They want to be able to play those remaining games so that there can be no real asterisk against their achievement. And, and Leeds will want to do likewise. They want to go and win that championship title and get promoted with no no disputes over it. Um, plenty more covered in there. There was a bit of financial stuff we, we, we've sort of covered locally already. We've already spoken to, to Stuart and Zoe and Ben about the, the reasons why they persisted with the furlough scheme. Um, mentioned the finances there a little bit, but um, Stuart mapped out the, the concern across the whole game, really, that uh, used a bit of a car crash analogy and said that as a, as a game, we need to be more united, need to be... Um, to find a way to put the brakes on uh, and sort of salvage this situation, pointing to Berry, pointing that he was at Wrexham when the um, on digital financial crash that affected the football league so hard um, had previously happened. So um, otherwise, he said the general consensus among most of the players is that they want the, the Norwich players is that they want to get back playing um, when it's safe. Uh, there are conversations going on today yesterday throughout this week essentially since the government on Monday confirmed that sport could potentially come back at the start of June that's all depending on that R number the reprodu reproduction rate uh, of the coronavirus um, at the start of June the government's recovery phase uh, recovery plan for the whole of the country if that's still being kept low enough, they will enter stage two of the national recovery, and part of that will be allowing sport to return behind closed doors. So it's still a little bit up in the air, but Stuart says the players essentially are on board. They're all getting their advice today. I believe the PFA, the PFA are having meetings. Um, uh, the training protocols are being issued to players today. Apparently that's been condensed into an eight-page booklet for, so that the players can really get a handle on the hygiene and safety elements of the social distancing when they first come back to training, which will be thing, it, it, life won't be normal for them to start with essentially. It's, it's not gonna be going back to full team training straight away. Uh, it'll be non-contact, it'll be small groups. Um, it will be distanced, you know, and maybe even things like they won't be able to eat in the canteen still. Um, still things to be worked out. So as far as we uh, know, um, training is not definitely returning in that um, style with Norwich next week as things stand and um, they players have been going in and out of colony for individual sessions to actually use just the space the pitches really um, but they're not able to work together they literally come into the training ground do what they need to do and leave they don't shower there they don't um, they don't eat in the canteen there's no no mixing there so um, that's all to um, still be played out both of those elements can be found at pinkham.com as well the those protocols um, sort of in full um, I think that's just about it on, on that front. Um, as I say, lots more to come from Stuart. He also was quite um, quite feisty on the neutral venues, which now essentially has calmed down a little bit. It seems like the majority of Premier League clubs are now told the government that that needs to uh, fall by the wayside, that everyone wants home and away games. So the um, he, he sort of criticised the national media, I guess, and former players who were sticking it to the bottom six. Um, last uh, last week, so the accusation was that the bottom six were using relegation to, um, uh, were using the neutral venues complaint to get out of relegation. So wasn't happy about that at all. But yeah, loads more to get your teeth into. Uh, there's also the stuff about the ticket rebates for the 2019-20 games. The club have acknowledged that that's likely to be behind closed doors three options available to supporters. You can claim your rebate, which of course, if you if you need the money at this moment in time, which plenty of people will, then you just get your money back, or you can put the money towards the Community Sport Foundation, or you can let the club keep it and it will go towards the academy uh, for the development of youth players in the future. 
which is, may, be, may well be something that they struggle to put money towards if uh, the finances really do buy as hard as they, they fear that they might. Um, we understand that the total that could be claimed back in, in rebates is getting close to £4 million, so you are talking a lot, a lot of money. And the club said in their statement that um, 36,000 supporters are being impacted by um, these rebates. So that's season tickets and memberships, essentially. So loads going on, really. Um, hope that hope that we're managing to keep you up to date with everything's going on. You'd think that you know there's literally no sport to, to report on, but I can assure you that we're working really hard to keep you keep you up to date with everything. And um, hearing hearing from the man at the top of the club is uh, is always always very welcome. So um, I hope you've uh, hope you've managed to. Um, absorb as much of that as you can. Plenty, plenty to uh, to read through. But um, things keep on moving, and who knows? We're maybe moving towards some degree of normality. Whether things are going to resume in June still is very much up in the air. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe we'll end up looking more towards July that we're actually playing games. But as far as we've heard, the the reported start date for um, Project Restart was from Monday, June the eighth. So. We're edging closer towards that, and in the next week or two, we're certainly going to get some sort of clarity because you wait for a set of deadline of the 25th of May for leagues to let them know what their plans are going to be. So we watch with interest. If you want a bit more of this kind of stuff, um, then please do listen to the, the Pinkin.com Norwich City podcast. This week we had Andrew Lawn from Along Come Norwich and uh, City fan Terry Westgate, who also helps um, Along Come Norwich with their work in putting out the flags at Carrow Road, things like that. Um, myself and Chris Lake, you were having a chat with them. I thought that was a really lively discussion as well this week. So um, hopefully you enjoy that as well, and we'll catch up with you soon. <laughs>